In this video, we'll install OpenSim standalone with the default settings. First, we need to find the OpenSim website, so I'll search on Google for OpenSim. The first link here is opensimulator.org. That's what we want, so we'll just click on that. And now, this is the main Open Simulator page. Uh, we want downloads, so click on download. Now we can see there's several different ways we can get OpenSim. We can just we can get the source code and compile it ourselves, or they also have binary releases here, just the executable programs, and they have installers for this, and they also have it packaged up as zip files. Uh, in this in this tutorial, I'll just be using getting one of the packaged uh, binary zip files. So they have several re releases here. I'll just get the latest one. So now I want to save it. And I save all of I've created a, a special folder here under under the C drive called OpenSim. And then inside that I have a folder called builds, which is where I, I save all of the builds uh different releases of OpenSim that I download. You can see there's some that are already here, uh, and I'll just go ahead and save this. I've already saved it, so I'll replace it. Now I'm just going to open this in the containing folder where I downloaded it. I'm using Firefox, by the way, as my browser. Now we need to extract this. And we'll just extract it. And I've already extracted it once. But we'll do it again. Now, <clears throat> so here we can see what we've just downloaded. There's a bin directory. And inside the bin directory, there's lots of subdirectories here. And a bunch a bunch of DLLs and executables. In order to run this we need to open a command prompt window. So if you go to the start menu, all programs, and then in the accessories ca category there's this command prompt item, menu item here. Click that. This opens a DOS style command prompt window and uh, we need to use some uh, text commands here. Uh, CD stands for change directory. So we want to go to the OpenSim folder that we uh, downloaded. So we'll go to sla backslash OpenSim. And we can type the, the command DIR dir, for a directory listing. And we see that there's a, a folder here called builds under it uh, where I've put all the releases. So we need to cd change directory again into builds. Now we can do a, a dir again, dir, to get a listing again. And here we see our, uh, here's our zip file that we just downloaded and here's the folder that we just extracted from that. So we want to go into that folder so again, we'll cd change directory, and I'll just type the beginning of this, uh, open sim, and then in order to complete it, I'll press the tab key. And you see it tried to complete it, but it, it missed, so I'll just press tab again. Ah, and here it is. So let's do that. Now we can type dir again to see what's in there, and we see there's just a bin directory here. So we'll cd into the bin directory. And we can do another dir here, and there's just too many things to even keep track of. So let's uh, do a more selective uh, listing here. Let's press uh, type dir, and then we'll do star.exe. This is going to show us all of the files ending in exe. This is all of the programs. Ah, okay, that's more manageable. Now, 
the a bunch of these uh, programs here are for grid mode. So you can see all of these OpenSim.grid, asset server, grid server, inventory server, messaging server, user server. Uh, these are all used if you're setting up uh, a grid on your computer. For example, if you want more than one sim, uh, a cluster of sims running on your computer. But if you just want something simple, uh, you can start OpenSim in standalone mode. And in that case, you only need to start uh, OpenSim, uh, OpenSim.exe. Now, OpenSim.exe only runs on 32-bit uh, operating systems, regular Windows XP and Vista 32. Uh, if you happen to have a 64-bit operating system, say you have XP 64, or you have the 64-bit version of Vista, uh, then you'll need to run this other file, the OpenSim 32-bit launch.exe. So you'll do one or the other, either OpenSim.exe or the 32-bit launch. Uh, in my case, I do have a 64-bit uh, operating system, so I need to run the the 32-bit launch. Now I'm just going to type part of this and then press tab and it completes it. So now we're ready to run OpenSim for the first time. Press return here. Now you can see it's it's updating the database here, creating the tables in the database. It's using SQLite by default, which is a requires no installation. It comes with OpenSim. Uh, it is slower than using something like MySQL, but if you're doing just simple things, then it's plenty good enough. In another tutorial, I'll explain how to install MySQL database to work with OpenSim. Okay, so it's done most of the installation here, gotten itself set up, and now it's asking me a question. Uh, it wants the default region config the region name. Uh, you can make this whatever you want. This is the name of the uh, sim that's going to be run running. And I'll just call this um, Open Sim Tutorial. You can call it your name, George's Sim, wh whatever you want to call it. Now it's asking for the grid location. You can just take the default here. Uh, you can see in brackets here it shows you what the default is. Uh, so I'm going to just press return to get the default. And again, press return for the default. Now it has the, this uh, internal IP address for incoming UDP connections. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 is fine for this, so I'll take the default. Uh, the port number, uh, 9000 in most cases, works fine. If you have a problem, you can change the port number that, it, that it's using. But I'll just use the default. Now we have the external host name. Now, 127.0.0.1 is called the loop back address and that specifies that it's running on this machine. Um, if you're only going to access it from this machine then this is fine. But if you have say two computers at home and you want to uh, access it, you know, uh, say you install it on computer one and you want to run Second Life on computer two to access it, uh, you'll need, in that case, you'll need to actually type in the IP address of the computer on which OpenSim is running um, in order for the second computer to be able to connect to it. But if you're just running it all on one machine, then just take the default here of, uh, of 127.0.0.1. That's what I'm going to do today. And now here it's asking you for the master avatar. Uh, you can do whatever you want here with this. Uh, this is the first name of the avatar. Uh, you can use your second life name here or create something different. I'm just going to take the default. 
and this is the last name of the master avatar which is user so, so this avatar will be named test user I'll take the default and now the password for the master avatar uh, the default password is test sounds good to me I'll take it now it's creating some default assets doing some other initialization and now at the end it says startup took startup complete startup took three minutes and 43 seconds as soon as you see this startup complete OpenSim is running so this is great we have OpenSim running on our computer now now we just need to connect to it using Second Life okay so we've installed OpenSim now and it's running we saw the startup complete message now we need to connect to it using Second Life uh, before I do that I want to show one uh, other thing uh, if we go here and we look in our OpenSim directory inside of the bin directory you see there's several folders here if you look inside of regions there's a default.xml file which defines the regions that the server that OpenSim is 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 running if we look at this let's see what's in here well we have sim name OpenSim tutorial that's interesting I remember I remember typing that in right and here are the default uh, sim locations 1000 1000 uh, I remember seeing that as the defaults too here's the 000 the 9000 uh, here's the loopback address that we used for the external host name here's our master avatar test user password test these are all the things that the que the answers to the questions uh, when we were just running OpenSim for the first time so if you run it the first time and you answer one of these questions incorrectly you can always come back and edit this default.xml file shut down OpenSim and then restart it and it will have the new the new values here so that's just something to keep in mind I, again this is in your OpenSim uh, directory then slash bin then regions and that's where this open default.xml file lives um, so you can change your configuration very easily just by editing this file alright so now we, we want to uh, run Second Life with our new OpenSim instance uh, let's go up to uh, da -da -da -da, let's find Second Life Release Candidate this is the normal uh, you can you can do this with Second Life as well uh, I'll just copy this right click on it and drag it and then copy this to the desktop now this is a copy of the shortcut that's normally used to start Second Life and if we just uh, edit the properties on this then here we can see the command this is where it's starting Second Life and at the end of this we just want to add a little something so that it knows to that instead of connecting to Second Life we want to connect to OpenSim so what we'll put in here is dash login URI and then the address that OpenSim is running on which is HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 remember this is the address that uh, we saw when we were installing OpenSim and then 
colon 9000. Again, this port number is a number that we saw when we were installing OpenSIM. So if you've changed either one of these uh, when you were installing OpenSIM, you'll want to change them here. So this just tells it that instead of logging into Second Life on the web, to log in to this OpenSIM instance on your local machine. Just click OK. And you might also want to rename this. I'll call this SL Tutorial Launch. Just so that I know that this is not the official Second Life uh, icon. So now if we double click on this, it will start up Second Life. Now we have Second Life, and we want again whatever you set, however you set up your user in the beginning. The default is test user for the last name and test for the password. If you changed any of these when you installed sec, uh, OpenSIM, you'll want to change them here. But I'm just using the defaults. Then press login and it says welcome to OpenSIM. So we're connecting now to our local machine. It says don't worry about that. Now if you look up at the top here at the about land um, actually yes here we can see region is OpenSIM Tutorial. That's exactly the name that I typed in when I was installing OpenSIM. So that's our, our SIM is called OpenSIM Tutorial. Now we can just move around in here, take a look at our SIM, take a look at the mini map. We see our island here that we're standing on, and we can Create prims in here, and we can edit the prims. We can change its path cut. This is OpenSim, folks. So we've, now we've installed OpenSIM, we've connected to it using our new shortcut that we created. So we've launched Second Life, uh, the Second Life viewer, and connected to it, and now I've exited that. I want to show one last thing, and uh, that's how to shut down OpenSIM. So if you just press Return here, uh, you can see that there is sort of a prompt here. And if you type Shut Down, that will kill OpenSIM. So now you know that everything's been saved, everything's shut down properly. Uh, you can then immediately rerun it. Uh, another little trick, if you just press the up arrow, you'll get your last command. And in fact, you can continue to press the up arrow and it will go back in history for all the commands that you've typed. And then actually once you do this you can even then change the command. Uh, so I could here change it to DLL. But that's just a really quick way. You don't have to retype all of your commands over and over again. But what I wanted to show is that then to rerun OpenSIM all I have to do is just run OpenSim.exe again and now startup complete and OpenSim is running. So that's how you can just start and stop it very easily. Run the OpenSim.exe to start it.
and then just type shut down to close OpenSim. That's it for installing the standalone version of OpenSim. Uh, it's, it's useful for a lot of things, but if you want to do lots of linking and you're uploading uh, lots of things using Prim Composer, large builds, then you'll probably want to set up the database to use MySQL instead of the default, which is um, SQLite. Uh, and I'll describe that in a, a later video.